Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Our God is good. All the time, God is good. And he will forever be good. Hallelujah. We thank God once again, uh, viewers and anyone that is watching me, I want to say, uh, you're welcome. Uh, this is your pastor, your apostle, and Pope Emmanuel. This morning, I'm here to come your way with the word of God, to encourage somebody and exhort someone, to help your way to be cleansed through the word of God. The Bible says that for what shall a young man, a young woman use to cleanse his ways? The only thing you can use to cleanse your way to conform to the image of our Lord Jesus Christ is through the word of God only. So the Bible says that anyone that hears the word of God and does the word of God or becomes the doer of the word of God shall be likened to a wise man, a wise woman who builds his house on a rock and that the storm came, the wind blew at it and there was a great flood against that house but the house still stood strong. Why? Because the house was built on the rock, which is the word of God, the application of the word of God. So this morning, wherever you are watching me from, I want to exhort you, come your way with the word of God, just to help build your life on a solid rock, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord. But before we dive into the word of God, uh, let us uh, worship God a bit. Let's praise God in songs. Let's uh, exhort his name through songs. The Bible says in the book of Colossians 3.16 that let the word of God richly dwell in your heart in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and in all spiritual songs, and singing with grace in your heart. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that for the good Lord inhabits the praises of his children. So when the praise of the Lord, of, of, of God's children go high, then the glory of the Lord comes down. It is good to let your heart be full of gratitude towards your God because of what he has done for you. The book of Psalm 103, verse 1 to 4. The Bible says that, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, and do not forget all his benefits. Number one, the Lord God has delivered your soul from destruction. Number two, he has healed you of all your sicknesses. He has given you strength. And now you can go up and down and do whatever you want to do because you've got good strength and good health. And the last one, the Lord God has forgiven you of all your iniquities and he has drawn you closer to himself. You are now worthy to be called a child of God because of what? Your sins have been forgiven. That is why before the word of God come, let us go into the mercy seat of God, to the throne of God with worship. Let our heart be full of thanksgiving in our heart and full of praise and say that this is the day the Lord God has made. Let's enter into a time of worship for some few minutes, after which we begin or we continue with the word of God. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, just enjoy me. He is the light of the world. Resurrection and power. He is the salvation for the sinful. And he gives rest the weary. He's a wonderful man. A God who came in the likeness of a man who humbled himself even to the death on the cross just because of the salvation of humanity. For God so loved the world. That is why he gave his only begotten son Jesus Christ. That anyone that believes in this God would have everlasting life and would never perish. Hallelujah. Be the light of the world. Be the resting and the power. Be salvation for the sinful. He gives rest to the weary. What a wonderful man. He called us to be his son. He come you to come in with him. To partake of his love. So we will love him. We will love him, we will love him, we will love him. Ah. He's our God. We need to praise his name. Banla Kabahadi Adoria da Kababaya. He's God. Bakandoria da Kababahadi Adoria da Kababaya. I will love him and adore him. I will praise his name till the end. Of the word, I will love and wait my soul when all that is within me. I will love him and adore him. I will praise his name till the end of 
child of God for having time to listen and to watch this video where the word of God is coming and we thank God for giving us this privilege and this platform to let the whole world hear his word. Hallelujah. The title of the word is Perilous Times and Perilous Men. <laughs> Perilous Times and Perilous Men. The word perilous simply talks about difficult, danger, wicked, um, tribulation, something hardship, something that is not comfortable, that gives pain, that gives cause to worry, and stuff like that. Now that is the term perilous, it means. It's an adjective and it qualifies now. And as I said, the title is Perilous Times and Perilous Men. So here we have two nouns here which the word perilous is qualifying. We have times and men in the topic which we are going to uh, discuss through the leading of the Holy Spirit. Perilous times and perilous men. Times and men. And the word perilous is describing them. All right, believers, at the sound of my voice and those who are watching me, wherever you're watching me from. The time we are in now, as I speak, is a perilous time. Means that it is a difficult time. It's a difficult moment which we find ourselves. Very hard, very tough. Things, are, things happen in, a, in an abnormal fashion. Things do no longer follow the normal trend of, a, of nature that it used to happen. Things happen in an abnormal way. And things have become tough. Economically, it's tough. Financially, it's tough. Socially, it's tough. Marital-wise, in every facet of life now, life has become very tough. Nationally speaking, internationally, worldwide, it's tough. <laughs> joy which, which used to stem from within and, and transcend out to affect other people, that kind of joy is very scarce peace that used to be emanating from within that comes out to affect people around you, now is very scarce there's no joy, there's no peace the world is lacking peace, the world is lacking joy there's no peace in this world anymore as you can follow the trend of sequence of things that are happening or of events that are happening, you can understand and attest to the fact that there is no peace. Wherever you find yourself, there is chaos, there is anarchy, there is war, there is inconsistency of 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 of, of things happening in a in a bad fashion. Things are not happening the way it's supposed to happen, and so we are in a perilous time. That was about the first part of the topic, perilous times and perilous men. Men of our time today, very perilous indeed, very difficult, very wicked, very, very wicked. Remember the word, that what makes up the word is the people in it. The people in it makes up the word. So when we talk about the world, we're talking about the population, we're talking about the human beings, we're talking about the living uh, uh, component of of, of this world, that is the homo sapiens that are living in the world, that makes up the world. So when the, when, when the topic says the perilous men, it is trying to tell you that the men we, 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 uh, we, who occupy uh, uh, the planet Earth have become wicked, have become very, very notorious, have become very difficult. <laughs> and so we have perilous times, Men living, perilous men living in perilous times. That is how I can summarize it. Perilous times living in perilous, uh, perilous men living in perilous times in this hour dispensation. All right, why the need for this topic? <laughs> because this topic acts for the occasion. It acts for it is it is very uh, 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 timely for the time in which we are in. We are living in a difficult time as a result of the difficult and wicked men living in this difficult moment. Perilous men have caused the times in which we are in to be perilous. Hallelujah. Nothing happened by chance. Nothing happened without any, 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 any orchestration under it. 
There's no smoke without fire. We are living in a perilous, difficult, harsh, and very, very, very wicked times because we are living with wicked men living in these times. And therefore, they have made the, uh, the time in which we are in a very, very perilous. Hallelujah. Now, we're going to uh, read the scriptures. Remember, I'm not speaking from my mind, and I cannot just make a philosophy or of, of my own idea to, 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 to let you know the word of God. The word of God is through the scriptures. The spoken and the written word of God makes up the word of God. So whatever I'm going to speak about here, I'm going to use the word of God to let you uh, uh, understand very well. We, we are reading the word from the book of 2 Timothy, chapter number 3, verse number 1 through to 9. Verse number 1 through to 9. Verse 1 of 2 Timothy 3. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Okay, <laughs> that's verse one. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. So if I say we are living in a perilous times, you must understand that it's because we are also in the last days. The last days are here because the times are perilous. And whenever the times are perilous, remember it's a prophecy. Then when the times are, are within the last moment of the days, then times will be hard. And that is what we are in now. We are in the last days. What are the last days? The last days talks about the final time of the existence of uh, the church age. Where, where, where the final moment in time where the church is preparing to be raptured. To meet the bridegroom. The final moment in time when, when, when the church will be redeemed finally to meet the Son Jesus Christ in the air. That is the last days. The last days talks about the final moment in time when believers shall cease to exist on this earth planet through the rapture. So we are in that time. We are in that time of days where the days are last, where times will be perilous. And exactly, we are in that perilous moment. But the Bible said that, but know that in the, in the last days, perilous times will come. Perilous times will what? Will come. Verse number two. For men will be lovers of themselves. Selfishness, they will be selfish, lovers of money. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good. Traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and having a form, yes, and denying its power. And from such people, you must turn away from because they are hypocrites. Verse number six For of this sort are those who creep into houses. Sorry, for of this sort are those who creep into houses. And lead away gullible women loaded down with sins. They lead them away captive. Loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts. Hallelujah. And they are always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, as James and Jambres resisted, resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapproved concerning the faith. But they will progress no further. That's verse number nine, the last verse for today's message. But they will progress no further for their folly will be manifest to all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the scripture reading from the book of First, Second Timothy 3, 1 to 9. All right. Remember and take uh, a key. I mean, take uh, concentrate on verse number two. The moment verse number one ends, verse number two begins with four, F O R, and four there is trying to give you an explanation as to why we are in perilous times. The four there is like is a conjunctional word that is linking verse one to verse two. Remember, he says that, but know that in the last days, perilous times will come, then verse 2 will continue. For, for, for men will be lovers of themselves, blah, 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 blah. 
So the word for the, as I told you, that is a conjunctional word. It links verse 1 to verse 2. That, that article or that word for means because. Or another word you can use to stand in place of for is because. So I can paraphrase it this way. Linking verse 1 to verse 2 of 2 Timothy 3. But know that in the last days, perilous times will come because men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, blah, 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 to the end. All right. So verse 2 is giving us an indication as to why perilous times will come. As to why we are in perilous times. As I told you that, there's no, there's no most, there is no smoke without fire, and nothing happens just by chance. Nothing happens just by, uh, just without any cause or any reason. Something triggers something to happen. You understand? An action is triggered by something with something behind that action, and there's a reaction towards that action. You understand that? So, what the Bible categorizes or mentions after the word for is giving you what has triggered the time to be perilous. Those things that the Bible mentions after the word for, from verse 2, is giving you the reasons or explaining to you those things that makes the time to be perilous. Number one, for men will be lovers of themselves. Now, loving lovers of self, Talks about selfishness. All right. So one of the main reasons why the times in which we are in has become perilous and has also brought the end to be near is as a result of the selfishness of mankind. Mankind has grown selfish to the point that there is nothing like having the interests of other people. It's always about me, I, myself, and me alone. If it is not about me, there is nothing good. Men have become self-aggrandized in all ways. Self-conceited in many facets or in all facets of life. Men have become or have grown selfish. Right from the top to the lowest, selfishness has become the order of the day. In all industries or in all companies or or, 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 or categories of, 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 of life, selfishness is there. Men have become selfish. Selfishness is saying that there is no conscience to have the interest of other people, but only us, only self, myself, myself, and no one else. Selfishness denies other people their right to also enjoy lives. Selfishness brings about backbiting and fighting. And killing, murder, it's all selfishness. There are always blood shells moving on. People are shedding innocent blood because of selfishness. Somebody can kill another person just for his money. Somebody can just hire a gang of, of, of robbers to go and steal someone who has worked for the whole year. And all his money will be stolen within one day by a gang of robbers. And it's because of one particular selfish man. Who is hiding behind the scene, manipulating things for his neighbor's worth, which he has used years to amass to be stolen as a result of hiring wicked men to go and rob him. So when these things happen like this, it makes the world hard. It makes the entire humanity or world, world, the world we are living in, become so hard and difficult because people are conceited with what? Selfishness. Huh? When he sees his neighbor prospering, because he's not the one prospering, he becomes what? Envious. As a result of selfishness, he wants to have it for himself. So they start to consult demonic powers, occultic powers, witchcraft and wizardry, sorcery and sangomanism, just to bring that neighbor or that brother or sister down so that he will have it for himself. This makes the word hard. Because that person will go into a difficult moment as a result of a selfish man. So if that man is a family man, if that man is, 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 is a breadwinner for his family, as a result of the selfishness of somebody, he has been rendered what? Helpless. 
Now his business is no more booming because somebody who is selfish has manipulated his business. Now his business is down. So the wife, the children, they also suffer. And then the word becomes what? Hard. Selfishness on the part of government and political leaders. When he is not a politician, he speaks in a different tone. A tone of humility. A tone of selflessness. A tone of I care. But give him that power to ascend to the throne of the government or, or, or the throne of president or member of parliament or, 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 or a councillor or a local leader having authority. The tone, the mindset will change into a mindset of what? Selfishness. It's only for himself, his family, and the rest become bogus for him. He cares less about anyone else apart from himself and the people that close to him, his family. When he's been given a contract to help develop the road, for him to use the money to do the, the project he has been assigned to do, he will pocket about 99% of the money into his pocket for his and his family well-being. And he will build a bogus road there, which will never even last for a year. All oh, selfishness. So when that bogus road is contracted by that selfish person, and, and in less than a year, you will see a lot of potholes, like a like, like well that, that has been dug to contain water. And you will see many cars involved in accidents because of that selfish man building a, a bogus road there. See people get a, a lot of uh, cars getting accident on that dilapidated road because of some, some selfish man, some selfish politician pocketing all the money for himself. And using a, 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 a meager amount to construct a, a poor road. In less than a year, you see the road dilapidated, the road broken, potholes all around. And motor accidents begin to happen. People begin to lose their lives. This makes the world hard because the country or that nation suffering that bad road, they will experience a lot of hardship because of what? Poor road network. So as a result of the selfishness of the people living in these days, it has made these days perilous and therefore we are in the last times. These have become very hard and difficult. Selfishness. Why is it only about you and not about others? Whenever we begin to seek the interest of ourselves only, we become wicked men and women. When we become self-conceited, other people suffer under us. Because we, de because we become deprived of conscience, void of offense, towards God and towards humanity. We, de we, 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 we become deprived of good conscience towards humanity because of selfishness. If you are listening to me as the son of my voice, take a cue from this. Don't be a contributor to, to, to the perilous moment in which we find ourselves. Don't be part. Don't become selfish. To make the world become worse, be selfless in your dealings. In whichever capacity that you run or that you work, be selfless. If you're a government official, be selfless. If you work as a business owner, be selfless. If you're a church leader, be selfless. If you're a pastor, be selfless. Think about others first. It's not only about you and your wife and your children. Think about the rest of the people. Be selfless. When you are selfless, other people will also have a better life around them. And the world would not be as perilous as we are living now. Hallelujah. So selfishness is the number one thing that has contributed to the perilous moment and times in which we find ourselves. Don't be counted as part of the contributors of the perilous moments or the peril that we have in this our world today. Be selfless. Number two. Number two reason why the world has become perilous and difficult. Number two is lovers of money. Lovers of money. This is Bible. This is Bible. And that is the only book which is the truth or which gives the truth. There is no point of argument or, or going against the truth. Truth is truth. is undebatable. You cannot debate truth. It's indefatigable as the grammar people will tell me. You cannot argue the truth. The Bible is the Bible. The word of God. God doesn't make mistakes. It's, it's the, Bible is the, the Bible is the only scripture or the only book which prophesied things to come. Yes! And now we are witnessing that things happening. 
Prophecies are being fulfilled. Prophesied over 2,000 years ago and they are being fulfilled in our days. That is the truth. The Bible. The only true book. So now it's telling you that lovers of money, people of this sort, of this category, also contribute to the peril or the perilous times in which we find ourselves in our world today. The world has become difficult and hardship and hard because of what? People who have grown to love money more than others, more than human beings. They become lovers of money. And you know, money is good. I'm not here to, 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 to deny the fact that money is not good. I'm not here to deny, to deny the fact that money is bad or something. No. Money is not bad. Money is good. Listen to me very well. Money is what? Is good. Because the Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, I think chapter 10, verse 19 or so, yeah. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, 10, verse 19. Let us read there. Just to uh, establish a point for you to understand that the Bible is not against money. The Bible advocates for people to what? Where to get money. You understand? Because money is good. That's what the Bible supports. But there's one thing that the Bible doesn't support. To love money is what is against God. To love money. I'll explain to you. To love money. What does it entail? Or what does it mean to love money? Let's go to the book of Exodus. So that I'll explain to you why, the, why I say the Bible does not uh, 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 go against uh, having money. You understand that? The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 19. I'll be making this video short. I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't exhort all the time. I will just leave it for another time and, and continue. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 19. Ecclesiastes 10, 19. A feast is made for laughter. This is the Bible version about money. Listen very well. <laughs> Bible's view or the word of God, the view of God about money on the land of the living. Uh -huh. So if I say God is not against money, you wouldn't, uh, you would understand. A feast is made for laughter and wine makes merry, but money answers everything. Can somebody repeat after me? Money does what? Answers everything. So if the Bible says money answers everything, then God is going to tell you and me that money is good. So work to get money. You understand that? All right. But in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, what we are reading? Loving money is what makes money becoming the root of what? Of evil. What does it mean for one to love money? To love money simply means that you remove the place or the Holy Spirit from where it's supposed to where it's supposed to dwell in your heart, and you push mammon money inside, and you take the Holy Spirit out. The moment you begin to love money, I'm telling you that the Holy Spirit is replaced by that money. That is when that money becomes your decider, the one that decides for you what to do with your life and what to uh, 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 and makes you to take decision. Money drives you. You become money becomes the driving force of your life when you begin to love money. Remember that when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit becomes your driver. He becomes your leader. He becomes your comforter. He becomes your guide. He becomes the one that directs you and leads you on a, a long life journey. But the moment you develop love for money, I'm telling you that that heart, where it's supposed to be the, the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit, becomes now where money will be conceited, where money will now rest. And there's no dwelling place. For both mammon and 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 the spirit of the living God, because when money comes into your heart, money tells you what to do, and whatever money tells you to do is evil. Money wants fame, money wants attention, money wants you to trample over people, money wants you to aggrandize yourself as the main boss, and there's no one else. Money wants you to be boastful, money wants you to what to 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 to, to do things that are nasty when you put it in your heart. So the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. You understand that? So people have come now to love money to the point that now they have become what? Dull in their mind. And, and, and now they are using every means possible to make that money because they, they love the money. So whatever means possible that they will use to get the money, they will use it. No wonder now Illuminati and, and Freemasons and occultic uh, world now is no more a secret society. Now there are no more secret society. 
There are no more uh, 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 society for uh, uh, blood money. They are no secret anymore. Now they are out openly, having come out boldly to declare their stand that they are there worshiping Satan for money. Now people can now show their certificate that they belong to what? The, the Illuminati kingdom. They show the certificate on Facebook and now they are about to declare their stand for worshiping the devil, selling their soul for money because now they love money more than even themselves. Because if you love yourself, why then do you go and sell your soul for money? You love money more than even your, your, your image. You are desecrating God's idea of creating you. Because God created you for a purpose, to serve him and to worship him. Why don't you bow to mammon? Why don't you bow to Satan to exchange your soul for wealth, for popularity, for fame, for riches? Ah, 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 ah. This is one of the things that have made the world we're living in very hard and perilous. People loving money at the expense of what they must love, which is the word of God and the things of God. People love him to the point that now parents are using their children for money. Now a father care less about beheading a son direct while the son is pleading for help. Daddy, please don't do it. But because of their extreme love for money, daddy doesn't have the conscience to forgive or to pardon or, or, or to let go of his child or to spare that son. Because of the love of money, a father behaves a son, use a head and take it for money. Goes there, trade it for money. Performs incantations here and there. They root the soul against an evil altar to say that your soul is forever for Satan. And you've got no allegiance or affiliation whatsoever with Christ. And you say, yes, I understand and I want money. Loving of money have made people become so much a door in their mind that no conscience anymore. Blood shed everywhere. They shed the blood just to have the money they love. And it's happening. Uncles are killing their nephews for money. And some nephews are also killing their uncles for the love of money. So if this happens, that innocent blood are being shed, killings here and there, as a result of the love of money, do you think the word will be good or will be sweet? Do you think that the word will be so easy to live? It will be perilous because of the love of what? Of money. Now let's come to the Christian done. The perfect way or the good way of life God has given to us through his son to live our life as Christians. The narrow way. Let's consider and ponder over the troops and millions of pastors. Those who have already emerged as pastors and those who are also emerging, those who are on the point of emerging. I want to say with all certainty and assurance from the conviction within me that about 97% of the so-called prophets and men of God are not from God. Somebody will say, Pastor, why? Uh -uh. Do you want to have a, an open vision to know who is from God? Did Jesus say that I will let you have an open vision to know who is coming from God, who is not coming from God? He said, for by their food you shall know them. And the Bible describes the kind of food that they must that they must exhibit or bear for you to know that they are wolf in sheep clothing. And any reasonable Christian, any wise virgin of Christ Jesus who uses the lamp, which is the word of God, as a standard for life and read the word of God is able to have an open spiritual eyes to see who is coming from God and who is not coming from God. You understand? And in the Christendom, about this 97% of pastors, so-called prophets and pastors and whatever they call themselves, they have already sold their soul to the devil. Let me take you back a bit. If you follow them, follow them, follow them from when they started their ministry, and you realize that some of them, most of them start so well, building their ministry on the truth, which is Jesus Christ. Along the line, along the line, you will sense that there is a deviation from the truth which they started preaching about. They will deviate and begin to preach something which is against what they have already preached. Now they will receive the truth which they have professed some years back. 
Now, the moment you begin to see a man of God who is now debunking the truth, which he held dearly to some years ago, begin to understand that that man has recently gone to sell his soul for popularity. And his assignment from the dark kingdom is to come and preach against the truth. And that man that used to preach about hell and heaven now comes to tell you that there is no heaven, there is no hell. That man that used to preach to you that prepare yourself for the rapture will come after years to tell you that there is no more rapture. So let us abolish the principle of what? Rapture. Let's abolish the idea of rapture. Such a man has just gone to sell his soul for wealth and popularity. And, be, be, and, and, and when they begin to say these things, go and see how people trip into their churches. Go and see the attention that they get, the money they get. That is his assignment and responsibility as a result of selling his soul to the devil. Loving money has made the world so much difficult that in the churches, we don't have peace anymore. Why then do we have chaos all around among men of God, fighting among themselves? One altar, a pastor raised an altar, another one raised an altar. For a man of God to preach, the whole sermon will be another pastor that he, he, he will insult him from head to toe. And the other one also will respond from his also altar, his church. And the whole Sunday service will be insult upon insult. You call this the body of Christ? Mm -mm, mm -mm. These are men and women who come in sheep clothing. They were once before, they, they were once with us. But they left. As a result of money, loving money. And now they come back as if they are part of us. They are not part of us. These are hired agents who came out from us. They went, traded their soul for money. Now they have come back to fight us. These are demonic preachers. Let's go to the Bible from the book of um, 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy. I'm still on the love of money. I am now on the pastor's who have gone to sow their soul to the devil and now they are making uh, their own life and uh, are living for the devil or in the name of the love of money trading their souls for, for money for the time will come I'm reading from the book of um, 2 Timothy 3 and 4 for the time will come when they will no longer endure sound doctrine but according to their own desires because they have eaten years they will heap for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside for fables. This is the time we are in now. They've loved me to the point that now they don't want to stand for the truth anymore. They don't want to preach the truth anymore. Now the truth, when they preach the truth, their members will run away from them. The truth, when they preach the truth, the truth will convict them and they will have a better place. And men will come to a point that their ears will be itching that they will no longer want to stand for the truth. So the pastors themselves also cook for themselves the messages that they want to hear. That's what we are hearing now. That's why you go to churches now. All you hear is, 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 is stories. Fake. Fake stories. Tales. They tell them stories, 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 stories. Only throughout. You go to a particular Sunday service, you will never hear a thing that talks about Jesus Christ. Nothing to prick your conscience for you to make amends and do what is right. Nothing will point you to Jesus Christ in their messages. It's all about themselves. It's all about living to fulfill the things of this earth here. It's all about living to make name. It's all about living to make money. The love of money. The root of all evil. And we are in the end time. For now, men can no longer endure sound doctrines. Alright. Let's jump on to the verse 5. I'm still linking the love of money to this. Now, this person, they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power of, of, of godliness. From such people, the Bible says, turns away from them. So now, I'm here to say to, to church members who are in, 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 in congregation where pastors are exhibiting evil fruits, which informs your idea that, no, this one, ah, uh, ah, uh, he's deviated. If a pastor can just be, lying, be, be sleeping uh, 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 around with, with, with members of the church, proposing to marry women here and there and be li living indiscriminate life, and you still reverence him as a pastor and you condone his teachings and you, you, you are happy with him, uh -uh. are you wise? Are you a wise virgin? Discern. For it by their fruit you shall know them. You didn't think that Jesus just wanted to know their truth and Oh my God. Christ never wanted you to know their fruit and just be, be with them. Know their truth and run away from them. How can you now realize that 
Somebody who came to you like a sheep is now a wolf within wolf. It's now being realized as a wolf and you're still playing with him. He's going to tear you apart. So if through the word of God you have not come to know that this man that is leading me is a, a, is a demon. And you are still pursuing him and you are still following him and, and calling him Papa, 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 Papa. For what? Papa who is sacrificing for idols at midnight. Papa, Papa who is sleeping around with young women and using their, their fluid to, 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 to perform his, his, his enchantment for his deities and you call him Papa, Papa. Papa who, 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 ah, my God, have mercy. It's all the love of money. Now go on the social media platforms. Where now the house of God has been turned into a place of what? Merchandise. A place of what? Trade. It's now a trading system, a trading platform. The so-called men of God who have gone to sell their soul to the, to, 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 to the devil have not turned the place of God, the house of God, into a trading room. Where you go and meet all categories of anointing, or you blue, black, red, green. In a labeled and packaged bottles. All with their prizes. And they sell them on Sunday. For, 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 for children of God gathering to hear the word of God now, they gather to, to be sold for things that do not merit. They sell things that do not merit their soul, that do not help them in any way. You, you turn the house of your father, of our father God, into a, 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 a trading center. You see, such people are scoffers. They are demons. If you are hearing me, I want to say this. If you are a man of God and you sell any object at your church for people to buy, do you think you are in line with the gospel? Do you think you are, line, you are in line with the work of the kingdom? Remember Jesus in the book of Mark eleven seventeen. 17. He says that, For the house of my father shall be called a temple of prayers, and not a den for thieves. Jesus Christ never, never in any way, condoned that the people, the members in the church, should turn the, the church into a trading center or a trading room. What happened when he went to the synagogue, when he went to the temple, when they were trading, buying and selling, what did he do? Did he condone? Did he wash them? What did he do? Remember, they were not selling anything nasty. They were not selling alcohol, or they were not selling uh, weed, or they were, or they were not. They, they were selling things that also help, like they were selling pigeons, they were selling coins and stuff like that, trading and stuff. They were selling food items. Okay, but remember, because the place of God, where the body of Christ gathered to pray to their God, is not designed for trading. It is designed for prayers. So what did Jesus do? He drove them away. He chased them in an anger, in a mood of anger. So if you have been selling, selling food in your, uh, in, in your church in the name of uh, 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 spiritual uh, uh, healing power, selling uh, uh, sobolo, there is this uh, local uh, drink that they, they manufacture uh, somewhere in Ghana, they call sobolo, that the pastor will, will manufacture a bulky amount and begin to sell for the, for the churches in the name of healing. What do you mean? Why in the scripture did Jesus Christ uh, 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 manufactured sobolo uh, and, and, and sold for the people around? The pastor can cook food in the name of healing. If you buy this food, you are going to be healed. Selling handkerchief, selling uh, stickers in the church house or in the name of the love of money. You must repent before the, 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 the wrath of God strikes you. Hallelujah. We are still in the loving of money. It is the number two Reasons why we are living in a perilous moment. That there, are, that there is no peace. There is no joy in this world anymore. There is war, anarchy. There is confusion everywhere in the world. Because people have become lovers of money. Self-conceited in their own minds. And therefore wickedness all around. And has made the world to be so much dark. Everywhere you go is total darkness spiritually. Because the world is full of darkness. Evil men and women. We shall continue this message because of our time. We shall continue again some other time. If you are here and you are a child of God and listen to me, the Bible says that test all the spirit and know that which is coming from God. How do you test the spirit and know who is from God? Use the Bible. Read the Bible. Read Matthew 7, 13 downwards. You know a lot of stuff from them. Be alive in the spirit that you can have the spirit of discernment. You can know who is coming from God, who is coming from, from, from God. And also, this is from loving money. Don't love money. 
Just work to get money. God will bless you with money, but don't put money first before God. Don't worship money and leave God behind. Put money last and put God first. God will lead you to, to use the money, and money will not use you if you put God first. May the good Lord bless you and help you. The message title is Perilous Times and Perilous Men. We shall continue some other time, maybe tomorrow, as God gives us, and we will dive deep into the rest of the things that have made the world in which we are living in has become so much perilous. And we shall continue some other time. May the good Lord bless you and help you. As you watch me and you listen to this video, may God impart unto you the spirit of the fear of the Lord, that you will grow to fear God, and you, and you will depart from every evil. You will not be selfish. You will not be a lover of money, but you will love God. You will love to be selfless in all your dealings. I pray for the spirit of humility upon your life. I pray that God will give you the essence of loving God more than money. God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Shout a very big amen. Amen. May the good Lord bless you. This is your apostle, Emmanuel Apuoko. I humbly want to use this opportunity to invite you, especially those in South Africa who are in Mpumalanga, to invite you to our 31st night uh, of crossing over service, where we're going to cross over from this year on to the, uh, the following year, 2024. You are welcome. Come and let us together with one accord pray into the new year and welcome the new year. For the power of God is always at work whenever his children have gathered in the spirit of unity and in the bond of peace. God richly bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.